on Sharia law and religious tribunals? Well, I have nothing against religions, and I believe it's a private matter, and it should be maintained as a private thing between the person and and his faith or whatever. But what I stand against is when these religious religions stand between us as people living in the 21st century where we have moved way from, uh, you know, when religions came, you know. Uh, I came to this country in 1979 while I thought, I mean, I fought hard for whatever I got in my society. Uh, my cultural background, my, I mean, and my, I mean, I could easily say, and I don't hesitate, it's a culture of fear, especially for women. But still, that fear carried on with me up to here. When I gradually started discovering that I am treated completely differently and equally uh, before the law. And gradually, as I mentioned, the two incident, th this incident after 9-11, which changed my mind completely and made me really realize the importance of making my voice heard in the Arab world, in the Middle East, trying to, bri to bridge the gap between I mean, I live the Western life, not all aspects of it, because I have freedom of choice, okay? But the most important thing remain, end of the day, is that I am treated equally in front of one law. Of course, recently I started this, you know, following what's happening in the Middle East and the rise of political Islam, and the most important is I started finding out that there is a huge a sector of society, particularly Asian, who has come to this country and have been completely neglected and left onto their own way of thinking and of living and faith. And I mean, I was shocked about 12 years ago when I came to know that there are about 105 segregated schools in the UK. And I was shocked. How could the government leave, leave them, you know, how could, you know, I was, I was really shocked. Where I stand, to be honest, is that I fight, my fight is not here, my fight is for the Middle East and the Muslim world, is that one law for everybody. The secular law is, is, is the best to protect the, the dignity of the human being, the dignity of women, and the society. The, my main reason for that is that I mean, as I have seen it in this country, that the laws, or at least most of them, are based on the uh, human rights, while in other, in, in other religious laws, you know, they are not based on that. They are based on, first of all, they put theology on top of democracy. Women are considered in all, the, in the three religions, women are considered to be lower and unequal to, to men. And that, there is no, no argument about that. I know, I know for sure that 80% of the laws concerning women in, in Islamic religion, in Islam, is taken from Judaism. And a lot of these laws has been taken from Hammurabi, a lot, long way before religions. So, these these laws are, sub, are I mean, they are, first of all, they violate the most important spirit of any law, which is justice and equality. Number one, equality, where a man and a woman are considered equal before the law. In religious laws, they are not equal at all. And the injustices of it is that a woman under these tribunal or Sharia law, considered Sharia law or Halakha law, they, they would get, they, they, they are always treated inferior and men are the superior. I don't know, maybe my English is not helping me or I'm into, I don't know. <laughs>
But the other most important thing is, is that these laws are subjected to, the, to different interpretations by males. And in, 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 in Muslim in particular, they are subjected to four sects of Islam. So they are different between, which, which would create really a, a bitter <coughs> feeling for women because they are not treated equally. And they, 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 they. these laws are considered sacred. So in a way, they depend on intimidating women to accept them as a law. Because if she refuses them, it means that she is no longer a believer and that might subject her to a worse sentence after that beside being ostracized from her community from her society so what scares me is that recently i started realizing especially within the asian community in here there is a rise of these uh, uh, tribunal, Muslim trib arbitration tribunals as well as an increase in sharia law courts and it, it shocks me that in a country such as England, how could they allow it? Because they, you are undermining these law, your laws immediately when you allow for another law to be, to be, you know, ruled. And and one example of of the ruling of these uh, of these uh, laws is, for instance. A young girl was married over the phone. Her husband, uh, her father, married her to a man who was 40 years senior than her. And the court accepted, the Sharia law court accepted that marriage. And uh, yes, I mean, it, 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 it's just, there are, there are obscene cases of these injustice and, 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 and violations of women's rights. And I, it, it shocks me that, as I said, in, in, in such a society, an open society, where you fought hard to, to reach what we have reached, we, we, we can allow such other cause other than the one legal system for everybody. For everybody. <laughs> Answer questions after that. Um, so should we first the panel first discuss and then open it up to the floor? Someone's really got their hand up. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, please. I, I would just like to, I would like to ask a question, which is, or, or rather I would like to disagree with you sadly. I do not believe that the basis of law is justice or equality. The basis of law is power, and the people who make the law are the people who want to keep their power. And an example of this is Libya, you know, the Gaddafi is making the law that if you are a rebel, I can murder you. Now, you cannot say that that law is based in justice or equality, but he is in power and it may, he makes the law that it is legal for him to kill people. And if, unfortunately, I hope he doesn't, but if he did, did win, he would stay in power and nobody would be able to put him into a war tribunal or, or anything. I, I mean, I know that I am coming uh, from... No, 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 I agree, I agree to an extent. Perhaps I wasn't, I didn't know how to explain myself. I'll tell you something, most of these regimes in the Arab world, they are based on, uh, on theology, that they have a given right mm. from God. Yes. And what, what enhanced that is, is religious clerics. So in, in many ways, religious cler clerics, to maintain their power, they, 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 they align themselves with the rulers in a way, mm -hmm. and they depend on the ignorance of the masses, unfortunately, because if we, if we look at the Arab world, regardless, I mean, we cannot generalize the Arab world because the situation differs between the Gulf area and other areas. And other areas. Uh, there is now a new class of well-educated generation who has come to the West or have seen, don't forget we are living in a different world, but the question is that these clerks are wanting to maintain their patriarchal men power. Mm -hmm. And that what is the unfortunate thing that, and still the, 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 the society, not only ignorant, they are not sure of what does it mean to have a secular law or a law based on, uh, on religion or values. <coughs> I remember as a kid, whenever I wanted to argue with my father about a right or something, he would say, oh, God said so. <laughs> and my argument was, 
my counter argument was that if I want to believe a God, I believe in his mercy, in his justice, and he couldn't, he couldn't mean to put me in this kind of situation. And that's how I won my argument. That's why, to be honest, I am still within the faith. I argue it from within, based on what's thousands of centuries, it's, a, it, it's not suitable for today. Okay. And you cannot live in a different world where we are, we have to be part of international community to maintain peace, peace and security for all. That's what strengthened me in a way that, you know, there is a new era. And I believe in, 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 in the power of women and the role. It's so important at this era that women should come to the forefront and be part of putting you know, new legislations, be 100% partners, not just followers or subjugated ones. I hope I'm clear. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. You mentioned um, Sharia tribunals or courts in, in Britain. My understanding is that they don't have legal force. And um, please correct me if I'm wrong there, but my understanding is that their force is purely in the community. Um, the, the community sees the judgments that have come down and they enforce them through a culture of shame and exclusion if the judgments are not adhered to. And you, you asked how can, how can the government, how can the state allow such a, a set of courts to, to, to stay there? I suppose the, the point that I would make is that it's not the courts that are the problem, it's the community censure. If you take away the courts, there's still going to be the, the power that backs those courts up. There's still going to be the, the, the community that <coughs> nods along with the, uh, the father who shames his daughter or maybe does anything worse to her because of, of what she's done. The community that does back the, the marriages between the young girls and the 50-year-old uh, the men. I'm not, I'm not sure that the courts themselves actually make it much worse. I mean, maybe it's rude, but that's just my understanding of it. Well, this, I, I think, to be honest, I think uh, there is a failure on the part of the government right from the beginning when they allow these people to come. There should have been a kind of a course of uh, creating awareness as what are the, the laws of this country stands for. I am one of those where I really didn't understand anything when I came in, in September 79 and I was so afraid. Uh, uh, so it took me a long way to realize and recognize that I am an equal person and I am a citizen of this country. And because I, I, I am concerned about this country, I say what I am saying, what I am saying. But the problem is these courts have used the loophole of the legal system. Like for instance the arbit arbitration. Arbitration courts. Uh, you see there is something in the legal system that says that if two of uh, two people accept this arbitration, then it becomes binding. It's up to the people, all right. But the difference is that arbitration in a in a legal court, a British legal court, completely different from arbitration from uh, a, a, a Muslim court, because that Muslim court depends on the interpretation of that cleric at the time of the Quran or of the Hadith. So it might be completely, and in most cases, it is it's not just. Okay, and if you want to get out of it, you go through a, 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 a thing of shame. So it is, it's a failure of the government explaining to these people, to these citizens, and especially empowering women, as well as the, these communities taking advantage of the loopholes of, of the system itself. I believe there is one legal system for all regardless. That's what I believe in. Would you like to comment? Thank you. Thanks for the question. Uh, um, okay. Um, there is a minority within the Muslim community in the self-appointed leadership, and I and my feel it is a minority, that is trying to set up a parallel legal system. And there's such a thing as uh, apparently the Islamic Human Rights Commission because our Human Rights Commission isn't good enough to protect either. But there is a, a minority, I'd suggest a minority, that is trying to set up and take advantage of the loopholes like the arbitration panels um, to set up a kind of a parallel universe. 
Um, I want to bring up a, a, an international example, which in fact links back to the question about the Jewish schools, so we'll try to do that, do that together. Um, but it's not just the legal aspect. Um, there is a case here where um, Muslim taxi drivers didn't want to have guide dogs in the cars because dogs are unclean. Okay, well, that's, that's not on, it's providing a public service. Uh, the Disability Rights Commission liaised with the Muslim Council of Britain um, to bring together Muslim clergy and scholars for a seminar. The result, an outcome of a discussion between specialists in Islamic law, was the issuing of a, of a religious decision. Who are these people <coughs> to issue a religious decision that, in the case of guide, dog, guide dogs, the edict against dogs as unclean does not apply. <laughs> There's no question about changing a law here. It wasn't even arbitration. The fact that these Islamic scholars, given that there's four strands to the faith anyway, many different countries, many different sub, subgroups, who were they? It didn't even get to the point of a, a legal question, but the fact that they're elevated to the state of being able to issue a decision that is then, because they've issued it, will be respected by the taxi drivers, because the UK police, and the UK parliament, and the UK government hasn't got the authority. Um, in terms, I wanted to say something, briefly, if I may, about the arbitration, the one law for all, um, and the Jewish schools. Right now. In a way, the, 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 the situation with the school, uh, the Jewish school case was a bit of a backfire in that historically uh, the Jewish uh, people of the Jewish faith and Sikhs were protected as a race. And this is where, where there was a sting in the tail. They came back and said, well, if you're a race, then it's racial discrimination. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of come back to haunt the community, which is, which is very unfortunate. Um, but it also backfired when uh, uh, there was an attempt in my background province of Ontario in Canada to try to use arbitration panels with sim no, similar no, no, no. The Ontario law is fine, thank you very much. But the backlash of that, and then the province of Quebec um, passed a preemptive law saying before the question even comes up, there is only one law, and that's the law of Quebec on that level. Um, it was also the opportunity to do away with what had been operating quite quietly and quite peacefully, the Jewish arbitration panels in North Toronto, who had been kind of under the radar, sorting themselves out, as many communities do, but because the whole question of arbitration and parallel legal systems came out, it was only fair that if the Muslim community couldn't have it, then the Jewish community can't have it, and the Sikh community can't have it, and the Hindu community couldn't have it, and again, sort of a, a bit of a backlash on what was historically a benefit. I could give you the, the sort of references if anyone's interested. Just, just say, yeah, um, just on those courts, I mean, a lot, a lot of people aren't aware that the, the, the Jewish faith, they run these courts for, for, for the last hundred years or so, and, and no one has <coughs> ever mentioned them. It's just we've had this influx of, of Muslims that are doing the same thing really as what the Jews did. So if they, if they outlaw these courts, then they've got to outlaw those courts as well. And I think there is, a, there is another problem. Yeah. It does have the question of whether this is racism rather than religious, whether it's a question of the color of skin, the class of the people, Muslims being, I mean, the Jewish community, if I'm not incorrect, highest level of edu educational attainment, highest yeah. level of business ownership. So there's questions of class, questions yeah. of race, questions of ethnicity, before we can get to the point where we say, well, they haven't had a chance. Yeah, and I think with the with the, the Sharia law courts that the uh, everyone has a right in this country to natural justice. The problem I, that I see within these communities is that under our law, if, if a married couple split up, then normally everything goes 50-50. Whereas with the in the Muslim courts, then it's heavily towards in favour of the man. And I can yes. I can see that there's a lot of pressure on the woman to go towards mm -hmm. when it, during they when they break up to go to Sharia law going to be much, much better for the men. Of course, all the people on the panel are men as well. Um, and and they, there's, there's going to be a bias towards men in that case as well. And that's why I, I think there are, I think arbitration courts are very good. If you've got a dispute with your, local, with your builder, then don't, you know, go to an arbitrator. Don't go to, to the expense of employing lawyers. So they do have a, a role to play. In general, women are the worst of part of this uh, tribunal or, or, or Sharia court or anything. And uh, particularly, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I came to know that 
particularly in case of marriage, you know, in these mm -hmm. courts. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, I don't know whether the, the, the Jewish people themselves put that or the government has put it, is that when such a, a wedding taking place in a synagogue, there, it, there is at the same time they register it as mm -hmm. a civil, yeah. you know, in, in, in within the frame of the yeah. British thing. While in the Muslim courts, it's not. And it is left for both people to decide if they want to do it. And generally, a man, it is to his benefit mm. not to register it. I have a case of somebody, actually a distant cousin of mine, who was married a, a Islamic, uh, according to Islamic law, and went with her partner to the <coughs> States. And after two months, he just persuaded her that no, she is better off to go back home, visit her family, and so on. And he just sent her the paper. And she couldn't do anything. She could not, I mean, claim anything. So, so this is where the government should be, should interfere in these things. Mm. Can I um, uh, spot hats to become more of a liberal feminist, uh, uh, <laughs> the key at this? Um, and actually, I think as so many things, a feminist uh, approach to this is is the right approach, actually. Um, and. Um, and the guy who said that the, that the judgments of the Sharia councils don't hold weight in law, they don't. They are not recognised in English law. Um, and there is something about arbitration, it's civil law, and any, and there is, uh, I agree, there are moves to try to have these kind of things upheld in English law, um, which, which is wrong and it should always be opposed. No question. But there is a point about religious freedom. Um, and in liberal democracy, it's important to have religious freedoms. Um, there are, from a feminist perspective, or whether a country where we have gender equality laws, which we uphold and we, and we, and we say that we really value, um, these kind of councils, which are hugely gender equal, these councils, and lots of women want to use these as part of their religious freedom to go to get a religious edict or something. Now, that's not something I personally understand. Um, and I also um, uh, would also err uh, with huge caution because we know that there is a huge amount of coercion. There is a, a huge amount of, of, of wider societal pressure. Um, and I don't uh, buy much with choice, uh, uh, you know, women just choose to go or not to go when there's a huge amount of pressure. You know, choices aren't always um, very real. But does that mean we should ban them? Um, and does that mean we should outlaw them? Does that mean we should outlaw the free association of people who wish to go to their imam or their rabbi to get a religious edict on a, on a, on a matter that's important to them, um, which does not hold weight in English law, uh, and hopefully never will? Um, and I think there are big questions there. I don't certainly <coughs> have all the answers at all. But I think that um, I don't agree um, uh, that, a, that a sort of ban on these things uh, it, it, it is right, because I actually agree with the gentleman that doesn't sort of solve the kind of issues we're trying to solve. Um, where there are real uh, problems for gender uh, inequality and discrimination, not just about gender, of course, sexual orientation, uh, and, and, and vulnerable P uh, minorities within communities, and children, and all sorts of other things. Um, <coughs> it, it is a duty of unholding all human rights or anything like that, but I'm not sure that banning it is the right answer. And I also think that it actually restricts not only uh, uh, women's freedom, but also religious freedom and free freedom of association, which I think actually is a very um, important value in, in, a, in a liberal democratic society, whether we like it or not. Um, uh, and what we can do, I think, is really, uh, and it might seem too aspirational, but, but really educate, <coughs> really, make sure, really make sure that in schools women know their rights and men know their rights, and men know, you know that actually in law, in this country, in English law, men and women are equal. And that is good, and that is justice, and that is right. And I think that there are other things, and I think that there, you know, that we have to. There are other ways of, of monitoring and opening up and making these kind of councils transparent and enabling women. Um, you know, lots of women who go to the schools don't speak English. You know, let's go and you know make sure that every woman you know in this country can speak English. I mean, for God's sake. But it's 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 those kind of things. But I'm not sure that <clears throat> just banning something, even though we don't like the decisions that they make. Um, is the right answer. Thank you. I'm sorry, there's a lady at the back who's very perseverant. Would you like to ask the last question, then we're going to wrap up because we're running a bit over. Um, I think it's a very great danger in romanticising our own system because what we have to acknowledge is that within our legal system there is a great deal of discrimination against women.
government mm -hmm. against people of minority race and so on. So the notion of this legal system that exists for us all is somehow up there and is so much better than everything else. So I, I think there's a danger, as I say, of romanticising. At the same time, I think that it's very interesting that our legal system, of course, did come out of ecclesiastical courts, and it was family law that was the last that managed to um, wrench itself out of the control of the clerics. And therefore, there's an irony that this system that itself managed to escape from the religious to the secular is now actually condoning the arbitration system within the, the Sharia law. There's an irony in that. And the other point that I'd like to make, I also think it's extremely dangerous to go down the track that says that we ought to allow people to conform to particular traditions and cultural beliefs because they're their cultural beliefs and we don't have a right to say that those beliefs are inappropriate and unacceptable in our society. Uh, if we go down that path, then we say, well, those who wish to engage in genital mutilation because it's a cultural, um, a part of the cultural identity, should be allowed to do that. And I'd have no compunction with saying that in this country and in any country, we should simply say that that is not acceptable and that it should be banned. There should yeah. be banned. Um, I'm cognizant that we've run over by about 15 minutes, so um, people seem to be a bit warm and a bit flagging. Is that accurate? <laughs> Shall we wrap up? Are people no, happy to... Okay, um, so, well, thank you very, very, very much, all three of you, for speaking. Of, well, I think we could have carried on for hours, although we might have been asleep by the end of it. Uh, not because of the uh, lack of interest, because it was very, very interesting. So, thanks for coming, and I'll allow Alan to finish this meeting. Well, on behalf of us all, thank you to each of our three speakers, uh, all very lucid, and gave us plenty to think about, and we'll carry on. Thank you also especially to Natalie here who so ably chaired it. Um, it's impossible with a group like this to keep the discussion within the time we set ourselves. Uh, I blame you lot for that. Yeah.